Just as a quick warning, the microphone that I've used to record my videos for the past two years has some issues to it. So instead, I'm going to record using my phone. I hope you understand. Thank you. Twenty. Twenty-four. I came into this year not expecting a lot. Even now, I believe that 2023 was truly insane. With how many games there were that were great, and with 2024 approaching, I thought it was going to be a filler year, which I was looking forward to. I would finally have time to work on my backlog. And yet, this year blew the world away. In a year where Final Fantasy VII Rebirth exists, where Astrobot exists, and where countless classic games have been remade to reintroduce it to a new audience, there is one game in particular that caught my eye. And that one game was more interesting to me than any of the games I just mentioned right now. And this game surprised me the most. Who is Emio? That was a question that every Nintendo fan had when Nintendo randomly posted a mysterious teaser of something onto their YouTube channel. This was unprecedented as hell for Nintendo, and it would take about a week for us to realize what they had in plan, and it was something that no Nintendo fan had expected. It was a teaser for a brand new game in the Famicom Detective Club series, and oh man was I excited. This was a series that I was familiar with, and even enjoyed as I quite enjoyed The Girl Who Stands Behind back in 2021. When Emio the Smiling Man was officially announced, the reactions from Nintendo fans were a split bag. It was really funny to see illiterate people's reactions to this, but it's also sad to see illiterate people's reactions to this. If you're not familiar with the series, Famicom Detective Club is a series of adventure visual novels. They're quite basic at their core, with gameplay being relegated to menus where you can select a few commands here and there. And while that might not sound exciting, and actually yeah. The first two games are just frustrating at many points. It's something I can't really defend or excuse as at some points, it's just annoying. Something that I really enjoy about the Famicom Detective Club series, I just love how grounded these games are. At least compared to a lot of the other games I've played over the years. There's no grand coming of age adventure, no race to become the king, and there's sure as hell no dancing to stop shadows to save the world. These games instead excel on the human side, which simply is fantastic. And all those reasons were why I was so excited and interested for Emio the Smiling Man, and I'm simply ecstatic to say that. It fully met my expectations, and it goes beyond by having just a good story. It's the fact that this shows us that there's no truly dead Nintendo IP, and there just needs to be a new idea and development studio that's willing to take on the series. It's important, because this is Nintendo's first ever mature rated IP in two decades. Yes, Bayonetta is mature, but Nintendo, they're only the publishers. And also, before I continue, if you haven't played this game, CLICK OFF THIS VIDEO, PLEASE! This to me is one of those video games where the less you know, the better. It's to rein in the expectations, to not know what's coming up, and to not get a false idea of what you think this game could be instead of what the franchise has always been about. That's also why it's hard to talk about this, because this game and hell, even the franchise, is not for everyone. Not everybody is going to be a fan of the lack of focus on the antagonist, the slow pacing, and the general gameplay. And just to make it clear, as a full warning, this video will have full-on spoilers for every aspect of Emio the Smiling Man. I doubt we'll lose just containing spoilers to the story parts of this video, but that's just not possible with a game as story-heavy as this. If there's something I have to admit about this game, is that this section of the video was really hard to write. It's not because of the quality of the gameplay itself, or because I didn't know what to say. This part was hard to write, because it's hard to discuss Emio the Smiling Man, without hearing someone say that the gameplay is outdated, or that the game needs to change radically, and that stings, especially as somebody who loves turn-based RPGs and knows the struggle that this genre has gone through. I mean, come on, I can understand people not being a fan of this gameplay style, I do, believe me. This gameplay style is not something I typically look for, and there is nothing wrong with not wanting to play the Famicom Detective Club series at all because of this. But to just say that this gameplay style is limited, outdated, and the same as the 2021 remakes feels disrespectful and flat out ignorant. I say this as someone who just finished The Missing Gear a few days before Emio, The Smiling Man released, and I understand. The Missing Gear and The Girl Who Stands Behind were amazing remakes, but a core problem is that sometimes you just didn't know what to do. But for Emio, The Smiling Man, I've seen gaming websites just ignore changes made to the gameplay, and it's just so weird. There is one change in particular that makes Emio the Smiling Man a lot less tedious compared to his predecessors. It's a little thing that will highlight text that tells you what to do. I honestly have no idea why this change isn't mentioned more as it is a game changer for me and made investigating a lot less frustrating. 
In cases where you have seemingly exhausted all of possible chat options, you can actually think. Now, can you try to think what think does? Yes, I'll tell you. It tells you what you have to do in the moment, or it even progresses the conversation by your fucking self. This isn't to say that all criticism towards Emil the Smiling Man is bad or even untrue. There is always room for a game series to grow in any direction, and stagnation can and will make a game less exciting to play. Despite the additions that generally do make a difference, there is one spot in the story where I did feel frustrated. My example would be when you're near somebody's old apartment, and asking this old geezer on information on what had happened like 20 years ago. And yet, that is a good thing. It is good to feel frustrated here. It sounds so stupid, and in any other situation, I would agree. But the thing is, you're talking to an old geezer who has Alzheimer's or some sort of dementia. I'm sure you can figure where I'm going with this. Talking to an old man is frustrating as hell. And yes, I hated this part so much. And there are times where you will want to leave. And it's here where I think that my belief that games do not have to be fun is true. Sure, you could say I'm just saying this because I like Emil the Smiling Man story too much, but I truly do believe this, and for any game. Instead of being fun, games should be engaging, and the gameplay should reflect that. And that's why I really liked Emil the Smiling Man. I was constantly engaged with the story, so I played more of it. I didn't have fun, because why should I? None of these Famicom Detective Club games are fun, and yet people still play them. Why? It's because these stories are great, and the Famicom Detective Club games feel so unique in an era where there are more and more releases that play it safe and homogenize features or ideas just so more people will buy it. For example, try to name a game that resembles this other than the previous entries in the Famicom Detective Club series. I guarantee you, most people wouldn't be able to name a single one. I won't pretend to be a master, expert, or even a big fan of these adventure style visual novels, or even visual novels as a whole. I'm aware about the Portopia serial murder case, the Okaido serial murder case, the Okotsu disappearance, memories in ice, tearful figurine. Oh boy, that was a mouthful. And also, Detective Instinct, Farewell My Beloved, which hasn't been released yet, but I am fairly excited for that. One of the biggest things to know about Emio the Smiling Man and the Famicom Detective Club series in general is that these stories are as slow as Chrome trying to run with 10 tabs open, and somehow, that's one of the main appeals of the series to me. It's honestly kind of weird now that I think about it, as usually, I'm the type of guy who adores games where they blow my mind with a new piece of information every 5 seconds, like in games like 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim, Persona 5 Royal, or even AI The Somnium Files. It's something I respect a lot about the series, and especially Emil the Smiling Man for not abandoning. The slow focus structure helps us give us the players the time to really get to know everybody in the story. If this game was paced faster, there wouldn't be time to become friends with Kamihara. There wouldn't be time to spell the tea with an old friend. Okay, maybe there was too much of this, but there's so many points in the story that are used to great effect, like one where Kamihara is freaking out about Kuzei wiretapping his car, the protagonist freaking out from excitement, or gossiping with Ayumi's old friend about knowing her. Moments like these won't always precede the plot, but why should it? In a video with Sakamoto talking about the series, he discussed how the ending would be controversial, and man, it's so good, I loved it. It's everything that the game was building towards for the last 9 hours. This standoff with Junko is powerful as hell, and cemented two beliefs in me. Those two beliefs are that Junko Kuze is possibly the greatest character in the series, and that Emio the Smiling Man is my game of the year. It's here you get to see how complex and how good of a character Junko is, and how everything is getting to her. She just saw her brother for the first time in nearly two decades, and the Smiling Man is dead. Though I gotta say, seeing Junko end her apology letter by signing her name as Junko Kamiharu is insane, I mean what the fuck? Nintendo, show me the two flirting and my life is yours. And with that letter done, Emio the Smiling Man is over. This is an incredible game with a really good story. And I know it might get tiring hearing me say that the pacing is immaculate and works for what Famicom Detective Club is. Yes, it is slow. Yes, there's a lot of talking. And yes, that's perfect. Though once you reach the end of the credits, you'll find out that this game isn't really over since you get a phone call. A phone call from no one else other than Utsugi who's been absent for just as long as a dad who went to get milk. Utsugi calls us to tell us about the origins of Minoru Suzaki and tells both the protagonists and us as a player that it's deep, it's dark, it's depressing. It's here where you're truly going to understand Minoru, Emio, the smiling man, and a lot more questions surrounding the unexplained. 
It's here, where you'll understand why this game was rated M. Understand why this game became my game of the year. And here, you'll understand why you should actually wait to play this game. Like, holy shit, I felt like I had a hangover by the time I woke up, and I've never been drunk in my life. It's that long. This isn't just an epilogue. It feels more like a bonus game just because of how much effort was put into here. This easily just could have been a wall of text, but... No, Nintendo and Mages truly believed in the game and put as much effort as possible to the point where they commissioned MAPPA, yes, fucking MAPPA, to animate an original OVA, which goes over Manure's life. And it's at this exact moment where I was confident that I need to make a video about this because I can't wait until next year. And oh my gosh, this OVA is brutal. Even though it's been a while since I beat Emio the Smiling Man, it's still really hard to think that this game exists, and I love that. The remakes were already a pretty nice treat, but to see one of Nintendo's niches franchises get a brand new entry? I think that's simply incredible. It makes me truly believe that no Nintendo IP, no matter how old or how poorly the last entry sold, is dead. All Nintendo needs is a dedicated team to bring it back to life, and I think that's wonderful. In an era where the gaming industry feels like it's going through another gaming crash, I think it's nice that Nintendo's able to keep on track. They're able to work on smaller projects with less and less limitations. That to me is what makes Nintendo unique. It's what makes Nintendo amazing. And it's what makes Nintendo, Nintendo. Matthew is out of here! <laughs> Thank you.